It's Carol Martine again, welcoming you back to my studio. Today, we're going to have an experimental video about watercolor through a stencil. This is not something that I have seen too much of on various videos that I have watched on YouTube, but I do believe I saw it at one or two channels and I thought I'd give it a try myself. I was pleasantly surprised at the result. I'm going to be rather simple in my experiment today. I've chosen red, yellow, and blue watercolor. Not the best quality, but something that will give us some color. I've cleaned up my palette, as you can see. I've also picked three stencils with the large openings, medium openings, and small. Alrighty, since we are going to be learning by doing again, I thought I would share these two low Cornell nylon paint brushes and I believe there is one, even one larger one in the set, but I have used this one before and I thought for smaller journals, this one might do the trick. And although I have never tried it, I've always used a flat, a flat brush to put my watercolor through a stencil. I thought I'd get out this big round brute and give it a try also. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. So, one thing that I did learn on the road to discovery was that you need to have a real large puddle of very juicy pigment. So, I'm going to dip my brush in the red first, and I'm going to be experimenting on Canson aquarelle watercolor paper. Now, I believe that I'm going to try this stencil first. Please for, forgive the sound of the lawnmower outside, but it was very rainy over the weekend and my yard absolutely needs some attention. So we'll just make the best of life as it strikes. Okay, here we have this rather busy stencil and I'm going to soak up my big brush and spread out my pigment and add oodles of water. And if you'll notice, when I try applying these colors, I have a very wet, pigment-filled nylon flat brush that is two inches for the, in this particular case, not that it would make any difference if it was two and a half inches or one and a half. And when I apply the watercolor through a stencil, I try to keep that brush parallel to the paper. In other words, I'm not working like this, I'm working like this. So, let's see what happens now. This watercolor paper should absorb any of the water that does manage to get through the stencil. quite evenly and quite quickly. Let's go now and see what happens with yellow. Again, we need a rather juicy mixture. There is a little tiny bit of that red left in the brush, but that's all right. Okay, let's see now. Let's 
See now what we can do by coming up close to the red and overlapping a little bit. Add more water. Oh, let's see, this could be a calamity because it looks as though I got a little bit much on there, but we will see. And our last color, of course, will be our ultramarine blue. And we'll come way over here and run this one right here. And some more next to it. Well, Let's see now what we have. Clean out that brush. And let's have an unveiling. Hmm. Not bad. Not bad at all. Oh, let's see what we have now. The red and yellow got together and made some orange along here. And the blue and the yellow married into a little bit of green. And even though we have a few places in which we had a little run under. I don't consider that to be terribly bad. Let me get a little bit closer. So, I like the gradations of color just by the amount of pigment that managed to sneak through and is being absorbed into this rather heavyweight watercolor paper. So, experiment number one, small stencil on watercolor paper. since I do not want to wait for that to dry. I'm going to remove that, find a home for it, and move on. Another piece of watercolor paper, and we'll try two different size configurations of stencil. And this time, We'll see what happens when we use what is left of our juicy colors on the palette. They're drying out a little bit because they're under a light here, so I'm going to add a little bit more color to them. And Alrighty, let's have a nice swath of blue over here. It has a little bit of red and still in the brush, so it's become a bit purple. And there is red in the rinse water. So now maybe we're learning that we need to have more available buckets of water. And let's have a nice swath of yellow up here. And 
last but not least, let's go back and visit some of our red. And let's run some red over the yellow over around this side and see what happens. Now, our large openings. I've never used one quite this large before. And in this case, I think I'm going to mix my red and my yellow. Let's try to find myself a nice peach color. Ah, oh, yes, okay. Let's see if we can have a peach colored flower and let's see if we can have it a little bit darker towards the center. And lighter as it bleeds out to the edges. And the reveal. Let's do this one first. Okay, this one I feel got a little bit runny because of the amount of water I used. It wasn't as controlled as the one on the other page. I wonder if that has anything to do with the pressure that I had on the stencil, but let's let me try to dry this a bit, and we will move on. Now, so, if we can pair the effect, this one was rather clear. Nice edges, crisp lines. This one got a little bit softer on the line work, but still attractive nonetheless. Oops, now let's see about our flower. Oh my. Yes. Let's go back and have a good look at this one. All righty. Well, I have, I'm not too unhappy with the edges there, but as I said, this is only a first trial on these things, so we'll I'll learn by doing. Now, I thought next, this was our watercolor paper. I thought next we would try a mixed media journal, find a fresh page, and see what happens when using paper that is not watercolor paper. You should handle this wet media. But remember, we are doing this, it's kind of sloppy, so I think we are really taking quite a chance, but let's, let's go. Let's go back to this one. On this side. This time, I'm going to mix some blue and yellow. No, actually this time, I think I'll use some of the palette colors that I have here already. Let's try some opera. Let's try a nice touch of opera up here. I think I'm going to make sure that I push the stencil down a little bit more tightly because it's a paper stencil, so. Okay, there's that color. A 
let's have a little Quinn Gold. favorite greens and if you'll notice I'm not thinking about what's happening here as much as I was before I'm just going to try to put some interesting colors down on the paper well I moved my stencil but what a nice potentially nice background that is I think I'll stop that stencil right there and dry this so that I can go on. peek at the back and see if it's going through. No, it isn't. Seems to be taking the mixed media paper seems to be doing as well as watercolor paper. And now I have a little, some puddles, so I'm going to ease them a little bit. Here's your last quick look at this before I dab it a little bit and take out some of the oomph. You'll notice I'm using Viva because it's watercolor. Ah, okay, that's very pretty. All right now, let me let me go to the one here. And what color shall we have here? How about some turquoise? All right. Let's just try some turquoise. I'm wringing, literally with my fingertips, I'm wringing some of the water out of this brush. Try a little purple now. Let's make it a purpley blue. Okay. Let's see what we have. Let's move this. Ah, it's odd, isn't it, that you seem to get a better, a better motif with softer lines than with the with the um, linear triangles but if we wanted perfection we wouldn't be doing orange would we all righty Try this big puppy down here in the corner. And let's go over here. Do some Strong green. Don't use this color very much. It's not one of my favorites, but I think it would look pretty here to give us an example of this effect that we get with a large opening. Here we go. And here comes the riding lawnmower. 
so I'll just have to raise my voice a little bit. Sorry about that, but needs must. Alrighty. Alright, this is interesting information. The watercolor seems to do quite nicely on mixed media paper. Let's let me give this a little bit of a dab rather than turn on the dryer. Yes, very nice. Now I have gessoed this page. This was just mixed media paper, untouched. Let's try now and see if we get a different effect with gessoed paper. It shouldn't go through as easily. Let's see if that's the truth or just the theory. I believe I'm going to turn off the camera now and go and change my water and wash my brush. I'm bringing too much of this over into the palette. I'll be right back. All right, now we have fresh water, cleaner brush, and mixed media paper that has been gessoed. I'm going to try and see what happens now with this stencil. Let's wet up our brush a little bit and maybe a little turquoise. Quite pretty. And large openings. Let's mix some of that turquoise in with the blue. See what happens. Keeping that brush quite flat. Alrighty. Now try less water on the brush and more pigment. See now whether we get a different effect. This is less water on the brush, more pigment. Hmm. Now that doesn't offend me because we're going to get a certain amount of that effect due to the watercolor. Let's see now what will happen if I go to gouache. Watercolor seems to be happy doing its watercolor thing under any circumstance, doesn't it? Okay, so we have a medium yellow. This is a gouache. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is crimson.
These are inexpensive. Reeves brand. Look, I had never seen gouache at this price point in a in a uh, tube before. So since the price was right, I took advantage of it. And this time, I'm going to use my smaller brush. favorite stencil. Alrighty, let's add more water to this now. Work it into the brush and let's see what happens with our gouache. Alrighty. One try out. Second one. And last one. Let's go down here. And we seem to be getting the same effect on gessoed mixed media paper that we got with our watercolors. Of, of course, it is that much more opaque because it is gouache. And a quick tap, tap, dry. And now, let's see what happens with this round brush. Let's go here, round brush. And some nickel azo. Using this in a more painterly fashion, you'll notice. Let's see what happens. Hmm. There's another. Another look entirely. Let me give this a tap dry. Hmm. 
yes. So we have round brush, flat brushes with gouache, watercolor on gessoed paper. Let's go back now and look. At our previous page. These are definitely looking more like we would expect watercolor to look. On our mixed multimedia book. Here are our watercolor pages. This was the first one. Definitely a watercolor effect. And now I'm going to use my Just For Me journal on my next page and play by putting a little bit of background on this page using old standby here and a smaller and a smaller flat brush. Let's go. It's time I use it. I tapped the brush on my paper towel to see if it would make any appreciable difference here. Let's see. Yeah, how nice. How nice. So, today we've experimented, and I hope you have learned that putting watercolor through a stencil takes practice little bit of patience because the re end result, I think you will agree, is really quite lovely. Not perfect, but then that's wonderful too. I would be most happy to use this as a background for more art, knowing that I had a lovely watercolor variegated, a little bit mottled stencil with success. And I think my favorite is the watercolor paper, although mixed media was fine. I just think I enjoy seeing it more on the watercolor paper. If you have enjoyed this short foray with me into the wild unknown, please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and I would appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel. See you again soon. Bye now.